What's up, everybody? It's Megan with Student Loan Planner, and we've got Mary with us today, also a Student Loan Planner consultant and one of our SLP Wealth Advisors. And today we're going to be talking about credit cards a little more in depth. Actually, we had a podcast episode a couple weeks back about debt that Sim and I did. We talked about different types of debt, how we could be paying that debt off, best ways to maybe leverage debt. And today we're going to be talking about credit cards and how we can maybe leverage credit cards. So I'm excited about this conversation. Thanks for joining me, Mary. I'm excited as well. I like to think of myself as the the credit card hacking genius here, but um, I'm sure you have some <laughs> great it. stories to share as well. <laughs> yeah, no, you you gave me this idea for the for a podcast episode, and I thought it was great because I do think a lot of people, and, and rightfully so, credit cards can be seen in a very negative light because debt that comes with credit cards is very expensive. And that's when we've gotten to a place where we're having the credit card like take advantage of us, right? But we could definitely flip the script and be leveraging our credit cards just like we can leverage debt. Um, and there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different ways we could leverage credit mm -hmm. cards, right? So let's jump into it. What are what would you like to start with today? I'll give you the floor to start. Well, I always like, I think the people love to hear a funny story. That's how I always like to start. And uh, my <laughs> funny story is when I, on my first date with my now husband, this was probably six years ago at this point, you know, we went out to a Mexican mm. restaurant in New York city and um, he was a gentleman, you know, and put down his credit card and it was like a PNC bank, like credit card. Right. Mm -hmm. So I looked at so him you and I was like, it. <laughs> oh, I did. And I was like, this card is crap. And he just <laughs> looked at me and he's like, what? And I was like, mm -hmm. what kind of rewards points do you get with this? And he's like, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's good. It's good. And, and, you know, that's how the conversation started. And um, so on that first date, I talked a little bit about some of the travel hacks, which, you know, we'll get into today. And mm -hmm. um, he, it like opened his mind, you know, cause he was definitely of the mindset um, that let's use your debit card a little bit more credit cards yeah. just for some things here and there, which, you know, a lot of clients, especially are, I'm, I find are just using their debit card for everything because they've been mm -hmm. taught, you know, like cash is king, right? So that's how people yeah. just want to pay for things. Credit cards are the devil. Um, and, you know, I'm here to debunk that and say, it's like really not true. Mm -hmm. What is it that your husband does for work or did? At the um, time? So he, he, um, he, he works for the state. So he has like his, mm -hmm. um, his normal paycheck, right? He he's pretty yeah. good. He's really good with his money. Um, I made sure to check that, you know, since I'm a yeah. financial planner, I can't, <laughs> right. I can't be dealing with like credit card debt and all this stuff. So, uh -huh. um, but you know, he was never taught about all these hacks. So I, um, definitely shared them. Um, so what's really cool is like, he didn't get to travel a lot when he was younger, just because mm -hmm. his family owned a business and someone always had to be home. Right. So we, um, he definitely had the travel bug when we first met. And I think we did mm -hmm. in our like first and second year together, probably did like five or six trips all wow. over the place. Yeah. And it was cool. So he, after that conversation, um, the card he took out was the capital one venture card. Cause that was my recommendation. I think I actually got it too. Like we both got it simultaneously. And at mm -hmm. the time they had like a $600 sign on bonus. If you spend, it's usually about like 3000 in like, let's say over the course of three to four months, which the average person does that easily. Right. It was just, if you mm -hmm. put everything on your credit card. So that's $600 of just free money in your pocket. And also you get like two times three times points on top of that so a lot of our mm -hmm. travel was free and he just couldn't believe it he was like wait <laughs> like what's the catch and I was like the catch is that the companies want you to not pay off your bill in full right. like the that's how they can it. offer yeah mm -hmm. but I was like as long as you're on it 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 works um so yeah, yeah that that started our relationship with just travel and trying to get as much for free as we can we can really that's cool so he fell in love instantly he had the travel bug and you started talking to him about how he could travel for free so I'm sure that 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 made the deal sweeter for him when he met you um mm -hmm. that's awesome though I love I love when like money and like of course like we do we love when like money is talked about on like dates or like starting to start relationships like where it's open conversations about money and financial topics like that's in a way like somewhat our love language right as financial mm -hmm. advisors and planners and money people um, but it also makes for a really good communication like balance with, when it comes to money with your partner that you're gonna have to manage money with for your life if you're planning on getting together and staying you know together for a long time getting married or or not regardless if you're planning on staying together a long time so really cool um so I'll tell you a bit about how I 
uh, advise clients to use credit cards um, to their advantage, more so from a budgeting perspective. And then let's definitely drill down into some of the actual like rewards and benefits. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of times when I work with someone who's never worked with a planner before, they might be coming to us because they want to start getting their foundation laid right for their finances, right? They want to clean up debt or they want to start saving, like whatever their goals are, you know, we're starting from the ground up. And sometimes that does mean they have credit card debt. And a lot of misconceptions I hear right off the bat when we're talking about starting to pay off that debt is, oh, well, I carry a balance because, you know, I don't want it to negatively affect my credit if I pay off my balance every month. I, I have heard this as well. People yeah. think they're supposed to keep even just a small balance, like revolving right. every month. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you don't have to pay interest on the card. If you pay the statement balance off every single month, you can avoid that interest. You still keep the card in good standing. They're not going to shut it down on you. Um, but yeah, there's, that's definitely a common misconception. So just to kind of rewind and say that pretty clearly, you do not have to carry a credit card balance that you're paying interest on to maintain good credit. You don't have to. Um, it is the biggest factor in your revolving credit, like how that impacts your credit score the most um, with revolving credit, one is on time in full monthly payments. And then the second is keeping a low um, credit available, like how much available credit you have, like you want to keep a good healthy range there. So you don't want to be charging, you know, up to the max on your credit card, even if you're paying it off every month, that's probably not going to look good because you're using up to your credit limit. Uh, that's called your utilization rate. You want a really low utilization rate. So paying off like your balance, even once a week could actually be good for your credit to keep the utilization rate low. Um, but that's like the number one thing I hear, like, oh, I keep a balance because of that. So we we debunk that. The next common thing I hear is, oh, well, I use that card because of the rewards, which is good. You know, I like credit card rewards. We'll talk all about that here shortly. Um, but we don't want to be like carrying balances or being irresponsible with our credit cards for the rewards. You know, we want to be al allowing those rewards to help us not paying interest for those rewards when we compare, right? Um, so we have to kind of debunk some of those myths initially when we start, you know, getting out of credit card debt, paying down those cards. Um, and then we can get into like talking about maximizing them in the future. Um, but one thing sometimes we'll talk about when it comes to paid paying off credit card debt is a 0% balance transfer card. Is that something that you suggest sometimes too? Yeah, I'd say it's kind of twofold. So the 0% cards are great um, as long as you can pay it off, right? Within yeah. whatever that teaser rate is. Because a lot of people, you know, 0% is great. But then once you hit that 30% at the end, it, it kind of creeps up on you. Um, and then another strategy, which I found with clients that is really helpful when they have like larger debt balances, like let's say in a, as an example, you've accumulated $10,000 credit card debt, um, is to try to keep that debt on a card that you're not going to actually be using ongoing, right? Mm -hmm. So you set up a strategy with your budget, like let's say 500 a month is what works. You put the 500 a month to the cards that have the balance, and then you use an, another separate card that you you charge you know for your expenses, but you make sure to pay that off in full. Um, I found just having that separated strategy really helps people because if you're yeah. using one card that has the balance, right, and then you just keep putting money on, you're like, well, I'm paying it off, and then you know I always kind of point out like you're actually not paying it off, you're just kind of paying off what you, the new charges, but you didn't pay it off yeah. in full, and it just it becomes very hard. And you know it's it's hard to get it. I I myself years ago had had a bunch of credit card debt just from a commission job I used to have back mm -hmm. in the day and a deal didn't go through and it what definitely wasn't like irresponsible spending which you know a lot of people that I always ask whenever I have a client that has debt like how did this happen and and more often mm -hmm. than not you know they feel guilty about it which of course is understandable yeah. but when I go into the reasoning I'm like you shouldn't feel bad about that like you know maybe you lost your job or there was a big move a lot of cross-country moves with people right with the whole mm -hmm. like digital you know you don't have to work in an office a lot of people, right? You can move. People have moved across country and then the moving costs, right? It just goes yeah. on their credit card and things like that. So I think just having that separated strategy and if you can get a 0% card, like hell yeah, do that. Save mm -hmm. that money on that interest. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. And, you know, and this is also why we stress like as planners, like emergency savings, like people, it's so boring, right. To talk about emergency savings and like having money set aside in a savings account. And it just sits there looking at you. It's really boring, but it does help prevent like these unexpected things from happening. Cause if you don't have the savings, it's going to be going on the credit card. And then immediately we're in some kind of credit card debt situation that we have to climb ourselves out of. So, you know, we don't talk about emergency savings to be boring or, you know, uh, lame. It's more like a preventative measure. Um, but I love what you mentioned about keeping like separate uh, cards for like if we are spending on a card still, but we're working on paying a balance down. You're absolutely right. Like it can like your payments can kind of get lost in how much you're actually putting towards the debt and how much you're paying back of what you already put on. So mm -hmm. having like the vehicle of like the card that you're paying down, having that be just really the debt pay down vehicle and then a different card or a different way of paying for other expenses. Like that's better to just make sure that we're staying on track there. That's a great tip. Um, and so once we're done with our credit pay down journey, we talked again, we talked a lot about this on our uh, prior podcast. So go check that out if you have some questions about pay down of debt. Uh, but once we're out of there, um, I really like to use credit cards as, in a way, a budgeting tool. And you might be thinking, this is kind of confusing. What? But um, <laughs> so budgeting can be really tedious. And I think when you think about a traditional budget, you think about tracking like each individual expense, right? Like this is how much I spent in groceries and gas for the car and uh, entertainment. But that can be really uh, hard to track long term if you're giving yourself a budget for every category. It's just a lot to track, right? So once I've got clients in a position where we're debt free, we're you know with consumer debt, we're we're now trying to find like a healthy parameter to stay within for spending. I use the credit card as the gauge for that healthy parameter because when you put when you charge expenses on that credit card, of course that adds up over time. And then you get your statement balance at the end of every bill per period, which is like 30-ish days. So every 30 days, you get a statement balance on how much you spent over the past month, and you pay that off to avoid the interest. Well, that statement balance, if we know what we should be keeping that statement balance at or below, then that's a good way to budget without budgeting, right? Because we mm -hmm. know, okay, the statement balance I should always keep at, let's say, 3000 a month. And you're throughout the month, you're looking at your balance because it adds up you every day, every transaction you have, you can keep a running tab on your app. Um, if you're at, you know, 2,500 and you've got a, a week left in the statement balance period, you know, right off the top of your head, well, $500 is what I've got to spend this next week before my statement balance closes to stay within budget. So it can help you kind of keep a pulse on how much you're spending over the course of that bill period and then give you like a real parameter to shoot for every time your statement balance closes. So that way, you know that you're within your spending parameter and you keep all of your other goals on track. But is that I something I that love that. Know? Yeah. The you're literally like, you took the words out of my mouth. That's exactly like what mm -hmm. I would say. And um, to your point with like the 3000 a month, like let's, some people just want to hear numbers, right? So let's say you're making a mm hundred -hmm. grand per year. We assume about 30 K of it goes to taxes, obviously very dependent on what state you live in, but let's just yeah. use that. <laughs> then about 30,000 a year for, you know, rent mortgage, maybe a car payment. You know, these are all things that can't go on a credit card. Right. So then mm -hmm. let's say that leaves about $40,000 remaining per year. So the idea is that would be what goes on your credit card. We divide that by 12. That's like $3,300 per month. So this, mm -hmm. um, I kind of view it as like your magic number, right? This is the amount that mm -hmm. you have to try to stay around. And it seems like you do that as well. And I, I feel like the feedback from clients is that they, they love that thinking because mm -hmm. we, we don't want to track. Like I always tell the story about my, my um, husband and wife friend where like she was buying $10 soups in the city and he was yelling at her for buying $10 soups. And I was like, we do not need to get this granular with our expenses. <laughs> like as long as she's whatever that you figured out that credit card spend was, she can spend it on whatever she wants. And I think for mm -hmm. couples, you know, we do work with a lot of couples and it's managing, you know, they definitely usually don't have the same view of money, right? One might be more of the saver, one's more of the spender. So this has really helped couples too, um, to not nitpick mm -hmm. each other for what they're spending, but to just really try to stick to that number. 
Yeah. I, I feel like I it has to be every relationship just about. Well, there's there's a spender and then there's a saver. Because that's the mm-hmm. same with our my relationship. I'm the saver as the financial planner. That's probably obvious. And my husband is not a spender necessarily, but like I definitely am someone who always got water at restaurants because I hate spending spending like two dollars on a sweet tea or something <laughs> yeah like, always got water at restaurants uh, and you know unless I was going out for drinks or something that's different but um I would never s- go into the gas station after pumping to get a snack like that was just never like those things I just always kept out of my budget because I was like those are easy ways that like those things add up my husband is not that way he will definitely go in get a soda from the soda machine or get like a cliff bar from the gas station Um, so like those little things, like if I was nitpicking those things, it would drive me nuts. And of course it would make me, uh, like probably not fun to talk about money with. Right. So we, we use this strategy, like as long as you're staying within this parameter, spend whatever you want. And you know, who cares on what you spend your money on that in that sense? Like, as long as it's within that parameter, we're good. You know, we don't have to. Yeah. And (laughs) <laughs> and uh, to your point, it was so funny because um, my husband, like a few months into dating, he's like, I can't wait to go back through my spreadsheets and just see how much more money I'm spending, like, because we're, we're together. And it, I was just like, <laughs> you track. I mean, I, I actually kind of liked that because it showed you. I was going like, say, so that's pretty hot, right? <laughs> but, um, and he's like, you don't track because he knew I worked in the industry. And I was yeah. like, no, I just, I automate all my savings, like where, you know, retirement, mm-hmm. all of that. And then I just stick to like my credit card spends and I literally never think about money. And he was like, what? <laughs> you just never thought of doing it that way. So I think this like strategy we've been talking about, especially for anyone listening to this, that stresses about money and just where their mm-hmm. money's going. Like as long as you have the framework set up and you know, like what you can truly spend on these credit cards each month, like the whole thing's going to work and you're not mm-hmm. going to be thinking day to day about like, am I going to be able to pay off my credit card bill at the end of the month? Like, yeah, you definitely will. As long as you mm-hmm. stay within that number. Yep. Yeah. It's a great simplification strategy. So mm-hmm. Um, well, cool. So we talked about that from a budgeting perspective. Let's talk about the fun stuff, the rewards, like cash back, travel points. I know that's like your jazz. So tell mm-hmm. me all about it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And I, I've, I've done several meetings where I, you know, I, I always on the first meeting, will talk to talk about this to people, right? Because I just mm-hmm. want to see like, are they using one of those crappy PNC cards or, you know, what, <laughs> what they're doing, right? And I, I've had a few people just say like, I don't know, I've just been so overwhelmed. Like, I, I know I can be getting more rewards, but like, I don't know where to mm-hmm. start. Um, mm-hmm. So I always explain that there's really two main places, right? It's do you value travel rewards more or do you value cash back? And then, I, you know, you don't need to just pick one or the other because in theory, mm-hmm. you could get like a new credit card every year and it's truly not going to hurt your credit card, your credit score. That's like a, a misconception out there. Um, so I always say, let's start somewhere, get that sign on bonus and, and just start building your credit and using that card regularly. And then if you hate the card, you know, we can make changes next year. Or we can add another card to the mix. Um, so in like the travel area, um, there's just general travel rewards, right? So I'd say the top three um, companies out there are it's the Chase suite of cards. There's like three main cards you can choose from. Um, Capital One has um, some cards and you don't have to have like checking accounts. That's a question I commonly get. Like you can, even if you bank at Wells Fargo, as an example, you can open up a Capital One card. You might start to get marketed by Capital One, right? Right. For some other things. They're going to want you. (laughs) Yeah, you don't have to. Um, And then the American Express suite of credit cards. I personally, that's the one I don't have. And it's like a cult-like following I've I've seen with (laughs) anyone that has an Amex. They love their Amex. Um, So I'd say those are the three best places to start. Um, And then from there, there's different levels, right? So as an example, the Chase Sapphire card is is really popular and they have a preferred card or a reserve card. Um, They, a lot of these travel cards do have annual fees, which can range, range from 95 a month to 250, sometimes more. So you just have to see which card will benefit you the most. Um, So those are the top two cards with Chase. The Capital One has um, a Venture One card, which is the more basic card. I have a friend that has that card and she Mm -hmm. saw that I have the normal one and she's like, I want that one. My card sucks. So, you know, it's sometimes (laughs) the basic one, you feel like you're missing out a little bit. So that's why I typically recommend the mid tier as a starting point for people. Um, They also have one that's even further up, but it has a higher annual fee. 
But I'd say with these cards, you typically get two times um, rewards for travel, two times miles, they say. And then if you book travel through their specific site, a lot of times you get more bang for your buck. I think that's the easiest way to explain it. But a lot of them right now are doing 750 or 75,000 rewards points, which is not $75,000. That would be too good to be true. (laughs) It equates to about seven, uh, 1%. So 750 that you would get Mm -hmm. um, in that first year. Um, and then the American Express, it's it's very similar. They have a few different tiers of a card with an annual fee. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is they will reimburse you for TSA pre-check, which is a huge oh. benefit. Um, so that every five years, they'll give you, as long as you use that specific card, you get, um, like, I think mm-hmm. it's a $100 credit. So whatever it costs, they reimburse you. So if mm-hmm. you've been debating getting TSA pre-check, it's almost a no-brainer with these cards. Mm. Okay. That's interesting. So one one thing that sticks out to me is uh, for spending, like, so for example, I'm going to pick on myself for a second, because I, I do have an Amex card and I do, I live in Atlanta. Our hub is Delta. So I, you know, I'm always using that Amex card if I'm traveling in and out of Atlanta. Um, but I dedicated that card. It's a personal card, but I use it for my business expenses. So this is another way that I separate expenses. Like I've got my personal card for personal spending, and then I've got my business card for business expenses to track what I do under my, um, S corp. And, um, so I did the Amex for my business expenses, not really thinking about how much I would spend over the course of the year and only really thinking about it as like, well, the only time I really travel outside of like vacation is for work. So maybe I should get an Amex card, but I probably should have thought more about, um, you know, what I would be using that card for and how much I would be spending on that card. Right. Because I know Mm -hmm. I don't maximize my card. I don't have a, I don't have a lot of overhead. I work from home. You know, Mm -hmm. I have software that I pay for, but it's not, it's not very expensive. So I don't have a lot monthly that's going on that card where if I had maybe chosen to use that as my personal card instead, I could be probably maximizing my travel points more. And I did just get pre-check. I just paid for it. I paid for it on my own personal card though, because I wasn't going to write that as a business expense. Um, so now I'm thinking, I'm like, huh, yeah, I probably should have thought more <laughs> about what I was going to put on the card. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's that shoulda, woulda, coulda mindset. And I think that's what like yeah. paralyzes people a little it bit does. sometimes yeah. when they're trying to pick one of these. So that's why I say like, start somewhere. Um, and I'm mm-hmm. glad you brought up like the airline specific card. Cause I get that question a lot. People are like, okay, I, I understand the general travel, but like, should I be getting an airline card? And, and my answer mm-hmm. is always, a, is there a sign-on bonus? Because so many of them are offering that. So you always want to check mm-hmm. that. Um, and then two, whatever airport is near your home, are you do you tend to always fly that same airline? Because sometimes it's a little bit of a nightmare with these airline-specific cards because if you don't tend to fly that airline, you don't get much benefit. Um, but mm-hmm. if you do, like I have the United card personally because I fly out of Newark Airport and it's all United flights. Um, mm-hmm. And just to have a free checked bag, on every flight is huge, especially that's if you true. travel like five times per year. That's, I think it's like $35 a pop. So each trip, $70. I'm not yeah. a light packer. I always will check a bag. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so that just, you know, there's an annual fee for that of I think $95, but just literally with two trips, you already paid for the card and then you get priority mm-hmm. boarding. Um, so that's, that's definitely a nice card to get, um, is airline specific. If you're, if you mm-hmm. tend to fly that same airline for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause yeah, I do get to like a free checked bag with my, it's a Amex, it's a Delta Amex card. Basically Mm -hmm. I should have said that. And that's why I mentioned Delta for Atlanta, but yeah, so it does add up like those uh, bags add up. Um, so that, that makes sense to me now rewards points. So kind of maybe some simplify that a little bit more. So you said, you know, sometimes cards will offer like 75,000 points to sign up that equates to maybe 1%. That's a great uh, ratio. So like 1%, you know, would be like the dollar amount, right? So $750 Mm -hmm. of credit. So that in a nutshell would be like each year or that year in particular that you sign up, you'd probably get $750 that you could apply to a future purchase, right? Future Mm -hmm. ticket purchase. Is that basically how it goes? Yeah. So I'd say like, let's say you decide you're like, I want to get the capital venture card as an example. I just use that one because that's the easiest, right? You get two times miles on everything. So let's say you spend that 40 grand a year on your credit card at 2%. That would be $800 per year 
of just travel you'd have. Plus, if you got that six hundred dollar sign on bonus, which actually Capital mm -hmm. One is seven fifty, I mean you're looking at over fourteen hundred dollars in just free travel in that first year, mm -hmm. which is yeah. that's that could be if you're doing just like a domestic trip, but that could be literally two trips for you, right? Would cover mm -hmm. most of your airfare. Um, I know prices are going up. I won't even get into what the airlines are doing nowadays, <laughs> <Right>. but <laughs> uh, yeah, but that that's huge. And I, I always tell mm -hmm. people, I'm like, would you just take like $1,400 out of your bank account, like go to the ATM and then just throw the money on the ground and walk away. And they always laugh. They're like, what? And I'm like, well, that's what you're doing if you don't have one of these cards, right? Like you're just taking yeah. money that you could have been yours, free money. You're just giving it away, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's really the benefit of of these cards. There's also, um, I sometimes get questions on like the hotel points. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband and I actually did that for, um, the, he got the Hilton card, which they it, they're a little more stingy, honestly, with their points. Mm -hmm. I think they equate to like 50 cents, but we did that for our honeymoon. So any anyone listening to this that's getting married um, with all like wedding expenses, I highly mm -hmm. recommend getting either one of these couchback cards, which we'll talk in a bit, or travel and putting as much as you can. I always check though. I always say, is there an extra charge if I use my credit card? Um, mm -hmm. cause you, if there, if the venue is going to charge you 4%, right. To use the card and you only get like, let's say 2%, you're, you're losing money. So that's something you always want to ask, even if we're big yeah. home improvements coming up, that would be a great time. Um, mm -hmm. some companies won't charge extra. And then we're like, bam, let's use this credit card to get the rewards points. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. I actually had a client, uh, tell, tell me the other day that, uh, so they owe taxes each year. And there is an option to pay online for like your federal taxes. Um, so they're a business owner. They've got a credit card that they are planning to use to pay their federal tax that they have to true up with at the end of the year. And I thought that was interesting. I was like, you know, I never really thought about it that way. But you can really think about those like bigger expenses that happen like every so often that you can use a credit card for. And if you have the cash, like if you save the cash for that, but you want to strategically use the credit card and just pay it off immediately mm -hmm. with the cash that you had on hand. Like that is a really smart way to hack a credit card, like to take advantage of the points with money that you were already going to spend. Right. Um, but that's a great tip with checking, like if it's extra to charge, because sometimes there is, sometimes there's a credit card fee of some kind. So you have to weigh, like, is it worth it for the fee that you're being charged? Um, and sometimes it could be. So um, exactly. that's great. I like, I like the then, math that you, com you computed too. Like that helps me visualize like the $40,000 spend with like the travel reward side of things. Cause that the travel side for me has always been a little more, uh, like even me as a planner, like I've never really cared enough to look deeper into it. The cash back for me was always easier to understand and quickly calculate, mm -hmm. but that helps me with the travel side. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> and to, um, and to your point with the cash back, that's the other area that you know, if I'm speaking with someone and I can kind of gauge either they're not really into travel. And I mean, especially during the COVID times, right? When like oh, people yeah. weren't traveling, cashback did become so much more popular. And I'd say if you don't, some of the cards do like revolving categories where you might get 5% mm -hmm. this quarter. I've told this to people and some of them like their eyes glaze over and they're like, I cannot keep track of this. I am too busy. So <laughs> right. if I, if I get that vibe from them, I, I just say, let's just do it. Like the highest you can get usually is about 2% just on all charges mm -hmm. right so like the city double cash card that's a really good one uh wells fargo just came out with one called active cash and both of those give a, a 200 dollars sign-on bonus and usually the cash back cards don't have an annual fee so that that's mm -hmm. like a little bit of a difference um some of them offer like the capital one saver card has four percent on dining so if, if there's certain mm -hmm. categories that you know you're a big spender in to get maybe more like a niche specific card for those categories is definitely like a winning strategy. And sometimes with couples too, what I have is one person has the travel card, the other person does the cash back card and you just, you know, so you get the best of both worlds. Um, so you don't have to mm -hmm. always spend on travel and you can just get that money, you know, get um, credited towards your statement balance, which is really mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think the cash back cards are good. I have, um, me personally, my spend card is a Chase Freedom. I get 1.5% on everything I spend on, and it does have some travel rewards. I've mm -hmm. used their travel center before. Um, but the 1.5% on everything is pretty easy. Like I don't have to track categories. Um, there are other things, I think like concert tickets or like certain things are mm -hmm. slightly more, um, uh, but if you listen to my prior podcast, I'm not a, a concert goer, believe it or not. 
Uh, don't spend my money there. I spend it on other things. <laughs> oh, I spent all my money on John Mayer, John Mayer <laughs> concerts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for whatever reason, concerts are just not my love language. Um, I love music. I, I play bass. Like I actually, I played in the orchestra. This is way TMI, but you know, I've, I'm a very musically inclined person. I love music. I just, for whatever reason, I don't enjoy going to concerts. I think maybe it's like crowds. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, so cashback cards uh, are, are great. You could do the simple math on like what you think you might spend per year with the cashback that it's going to give you. And I tell folks, you know, some people will ask like, well, do you like save it up or do you apply it to your statement balance? Do you move it to savings? What do you do? And I think that depends on what you want. Like I use it on a, as a monthly credit and I kind of see it as like a free dinner pretty much like a free mm -hmm. dinner towards what I spent that month. Um, but some folks prefer to let it kind of accrue and then they spend that on like a vacation or something nice for themselves at the end of the year. If you like that, that's totally fine to do it that way too. Um, so there's a couple ways you could do the cash back, but um, I think uh, any, so, oh, one, one thing I wanted to go back to kind of related to travel, but this is related to a lot of credit cards. There's some kind of hidden benefits with credit cards too, like, um, uh, like travelers protection, uh, some, some types of traveler protection thing that you're probably getting at is just like with fraud protection, it's protection. so much better, right? Because yeah. just, mm -hmm. I had, I once had a family friend that someone got a hold of their checking account through their debit card and legitimately cleared them out. Uh, they got the money yeah. back, but it was such a hard process. It took a long, a long time, process. Right? Yeah. Whereas if, if you see a fraudulent charge on your credit card, like you call the company up. Sometimes your company will even reach out to you and you're like, yeah. that was not me. And they'll cancel the card immediately. They mm -hmm. make right by that payment and they send you a new card. So like, it's just, mm -hmm. especially if you're traveling and things like that, like if your wallet gets stolen, all of these things, like to have actual credit cards versus a debit card is just so valuable. Yeah. The protection is really mm -hmm. crucial, especially like, have you been seeing like the, there's always new spams going on, but um, the one with uh, travel tra or like parking lots, like, you know how you can scan a QR code, like on, in a parking lot and pay for parking. Mm -hmm. They've been putting like stickers up uh, over oh, the QR code. Oh God, I have not heard this, but I'm not yes. shocked by this. This is crazy. Yeah. So if you <laughs> used your credit card, like, and that was a fraudulent charge, like there's, you're going to get that back a lot faster than like if you use your debit card. Um, so very, very, you know, interesting and well, well worth, worth it protections to be using the credit card too. Um, anything we're missing, anything we've left out? Um, I'd say the last thing we can end with, um, one tool I personally use that I really like is this, it's an app called credit wise. Have you heard mm -hmm. about this? I have heard. So it's, yeah. it's through capital one. Again, you don't need to have an account with them, but it's, it's a credit monitoring tool, which is really nice. So they monitor things like if your email was hacked on the dark web, I actually got that oh alert a few times. Um, they also have a really nice credit simulation tool. So if after, you know, listening to this podcast, you're like, Hey, I wonder like, how would my credit change if I put like this amount of a charge on my card or if I took out a new credit card or what if I took out two new cards this year? You can actually model those things and see how it will affect your credit score. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I found it very helpful. And it also it just tracks what your credit score is, you know, month to month, which is very helpful mm -hmm. as well, especially if down the line you're you're buying a house or getting a new car because that directly impacts the interest rate that gets charged. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's super helpful. So credit wise, don't have to have a Capital One account, you said. Um, so kind of like tracking your own, like the guts of your credit without mm -hmm. having to go through the annual credit.com website and like download those ugly reports. <laughs> that's another way you could do it for free, but, um, no, that's a great tip. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today and talking about credit cards and fun reward stuff and how we can maximize the card and not let it take advantage of us. This was super insightful. Loved it. Loved your stories <laughs> too. I always love a good story. Yeah. Yours too. <laughs> Uh, well, thanks. Thanks to you guys for listening in. Um, if you have student loan debt, you need some help navigating how to take care of that student loan debt and start working towards being able to focus on other things like travel hacking and using credit cards responsibly, like definitely let us know. We have one-on-one -on -one consultations. We've got a lot of free content on our studentloanplanner.com website. Uh, we also have a financial planning firm that we started. Um, it's a separate company, but SLP Wealth that uh, a lot of our consultants are advisors at as well. So you can get your student loan plan done at Student Loan Planner. 
Once that's knocked out, we can roll into financial planning and start putting together some of these strategies that we're talking about now and some of our financial planning conversations. Um, but thanks for hanging out with us today and, you know, let us know if we can help. We're, we're here for you and we'll catch you on the next one.